Lee Kenyan Jui. I, I think it's great we're going into this interview on the back of that story, Ju Julia Siego's su success. This guy taught himself on YouTube. It shows that we can retrain our minds. We can, we can achieve anything we aim to achieve. Um, we've come from a culture of incredible misbehavior on our roads. The young man who says, I'm a road hog and no one has caught me. He's, he's bragging about it. Um, what are you doing as NTSB in terms of prosecution, in terms of ensuring that there are consequences for choices, a, a phrase that we know very well. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I want to first thank you for the opportunity to be able to articulate issues to do with road safety because they are really a national issue. Mm -hmm. And I want to start by saying that uh, in the past we've had one big problem because it was not possible to know where to take road safety related issues. It was neither the Ministry of Transport nor Road nor Kenya Police or the Ministry of Health. You didn't have a one-stop sort of solution. And therefore, the government came up with the National Transport and Safety Authority to be able to address these issues. Now, one of the biggest problems that we face even today is the mindset of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. But as long as there's no camera or no policeman, it is okay to break the law. And I think that is really what we are trying to look at and trying to tell you that you may not be caught by the policeman or by the camera, but it is your own life and also the life of other people who are actually using the same roads. So I think it's a campaign that we have launched and we're trying to work with everybody and I think it is not about road safety being a function of the ministry or the police or NTSA. Everybody must feel that they are part and parcel of this. And I'm happy that the media is in the forefront mm -hmm. through your road hog um, uh, clips and all the other things mm -hmm. and people being able to know that they can participate in making their roads safer. I also would want to say that uh, our numbers in terms of the people who die on the roads are a bit too high for a 40 million population. Uh, a bit too China. high might too be an high. understatement. You know, right. it's, it's quite high. And also when you compare this the year number so of people, yeah. this year so far we've lost 1,000, is it 600? 1,600 yeah. around there. Mm -hmm. But uh, the good thing is that since we have put a few interventions uh, between January and to date, mm -hmm. the number of people who have died this year up to date compared to last year up to the same date, this year we are 260 lower than last year. So we're a slight improvement. Decline. Okay. However, it is good to quantify that decline. That decline has mainly been on PSV and buses, and I'm glad to say that uh, in that category we've seen a bit of discipline. And all of us who are on the roads will admit that, uh, especially after we put the new speed governor, you will find vehicles are actually adhering to the speed limit. And that is really one of our biggest achievements so far. But a few who have not complied, will still try and, and, and do w that. W where is the situation worse? Worst? What, 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 is, it, is it private vehicles? Yeah. Is it we know motorcycles? There's quite a high incidence of yeah. Uh, accidents. Yeah. Our biggest problem is actually the motorcyclists, uh, or Boda Boda as you call them, and the pedestrians. On pedestrians. average, they constitute about 60 to 70 percent. And I think that's an area we really want to focus on. And I'm glad that uh, in the last couple of weeks, we started uh, this idea of arresting people who can see the footbridge and they don't use it and want to cross a three or four lane road. And I want to say that through that, by the end of uh, this month, we'll have prosecuted over a thousand people. Wow. We are collecting on average three million uh, shillings uh, a month from offenders on the road. So I think all you're trying to say is that we want to ensure that enforcement is done so that people can be able to use the road in a manner that does not endanger them or the others. We're coming back in just a short while. We're going to talk corruption. We're going to talk statistics and, and, and other things, including the new driver's licenses that will be issued. Um, we've seen parents running across a road with children in, in really dangerous areas. So it's good to hear action is being taken. But stay with us. Continue to share your views. Double two four double two. Stay with Sunday Live. Sunday Live. We go straight to statistics now. Let's look at the figures on road safety in Kenya. They should be on your screen in just a moment. We're going to do a comparative analysis 2013 and 2014 so far. We start with the victims and uh, in terms of the number of people who have died on the roads this year right now it's at 1,616. Last year at this time 1,856. The variance is 240 lives which represents 12.9%, so that's about 13%, just going on 13%. Seriously injured this year so far, 
3,042 people have been seriously injured in accidents on our roads. Last year, the number was 3,656. 614 lives is, is the difference, um, or people, people injured is the difference. That represents 16.8%, so just going on to 17% improvement there. Slightly injured, 2,079 uh, this year. Last year, this time, it was 2,978. So 899 uh, is the difference there, and that represents 30.2%. Uh, so that's quite a significant change there. Um, we're going to move on to look now at the summary of people who have actually lost their lives um, on our roads. And, and it's really humbling to, to note that we're talking, Lee, about lives lost. You know, these are numbers, but ladies and gentlemen watching, um, these, these are people who've lost their lives. So pedestrians, um, we've lost 763 pedestrians on the road so far this year. Last year it was 864 and the difference there in terms of uh, percentage is 11%. We've improved by 11%. Drivers who have lost their lives, 142 at this time last uh, this year. Uh, at this time last year it was 173. The difference there um, is 17.9% percent in terms of passengers we have 333 um, who have lost their lives this year so far last year it was 468 the percentage difference is 28 percent very significant um, and, and I think we do have another um, file there for you to take a look at which is still important, yes, pillion passengers. Now, in case you don't know what a pillion passenger is, it's somebody who sits behind a motorcyclist on a motorcycle. 90 lives lost so far this year. Last year, though, uh, it was 86%. So there's a, an increase there of 4%, 4.6%, just going on 5%. Pedal cyclists, 65% dead this year. 82% was the number last year. That is an improvement of 20%. Motorcyclists, 233 have lost their lives this year. 183 was last year. That's, uh, that's We've gone down there by 21%. Yeah. Thank you for those statistics. Um, I hope you've taken them in at home. So Lee, it seems like we, we really do have a problem with motorcycles because yeah, yeah. we're seeing an increase in the motorcyclists killed and also the number of passengers killed. Yeah. We're, we're Tell us, what's going wrong with The reality um, is that uh, we have made tremendous progress uh, when it comes to the PSVs and the private vehicles and all that. But if you look at the number of motorcycles that are being registered uh, every day, they are very many. Then number two, most of them are used for commercial purposes. They're used to transport goods, people, name it, across, you know, in the, sm in the smaller towns. And uh, the worst thing is that I'm sure you've not seen any driving school where they do mm. that massive training for those drivers. So we are rolling out a program. First, we are starting with a curriculum right. and to ensure that we retrain these people and to ensure also that they have helmets. Again, our biggest problem is a lot of the accidents we have with the motorcyclists have to do with head injuries, Basic which safety, are very right. difficult right. To, to treat. When you have a head fracture, mm -hmm. your chances of survival um, is, is, is very low. So I think all you're trying to say is that through these statistics, uh, we are going to inform our next actions. And it's going to be back in the rural areas, back in places where these motorcycles are. And anybody who is found uh, on a motorcycle without a helmet is going to be in trouble. Then also reflective jacket, because because what also they are doing is that they are uh, on dimly lit areas mm -hmm. and they are not uh, reflective. Therefore, again, they, they become a big problem. So we really must focus on this area together again with the people who are crossing the roads. So a big kudos to the motorists because the accidents on the road have remarkably come down. Mm -hmm. But on the category of, of uh, pedestrians and also motorcyclists, we've got a long way to go. And I think I'm calling upon every Kenyan to be part of the journey. Let's talk about interventions. You've mentioned some key interventions already. But, but I want to ask, how do you measure corruption? A lot of people sending their views in, as you can see, are talking about corruption on the roads. And if corruption exists, our behavior is, is yeah. not likely to, mm. to change. Mm. That's, that's number one. Um, also, there's talk of the new driver's license. Yes. How will that impact us? Uh, to start with corruption, I say, I think it's a problem as Kenyans, we must admit it is here and we must find a way of dealing with it. First, I want to say that not all policemen are bad because I know there are a few who go out of their way and mm -hmm. who have been champions on the road. And to them, I say a big thank you. However, we still have a few who consider their job um, 
cash cow to make mm -hmm. money and not to save lives. And I think for those ones, I think through government and all the channels available, even through Roadhog, we would want to be able to know them so that we can be able to take action. Secondly, also on the issue of um, the smart driving license, the reason why people misbehave on the road is because they know nobody will know what you did on Thika Road or when you're on Mombasa. But now we are coming up with a synchronized data system where your driving license is going to be more or less like your, your, your um, ATM card. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you, you put it into some machine, it's going to say what driver you are, your name, all the details, how many years you've been driving, how many times you've been fined for whatever crime or whatever offense you've committed on the road and thereby also introduce a point system so that uh -huh. whenever you misbehave or you overspeed, we reduce this number of points and have it on record. If you're caught drunk driving, you also reduce and also have that on record. And for as long as people know that they can be misbehave and, they, and it's not on record, they're going to do it. So we signed that um, particular project about two weeks ago, and we are confident before the end of the year we'll be able to have Kenyans having a uh, smart driving license that will be able to have a point system. And at some point, you get to a situation whereby you uh, had had so many offenses that you can no longer be on our roads. The license can be revoked. It will be revoked. So the point is, we must have a way of getting the wrong drivers out of our roads. Okay. And that's what it will do. do, you do uh, to all employers watching as well, I think you know it would be great to be able to vet people as they come in. Maybe they should actually check Absolutely. that yeah. to know yeah. if, if the person they're employing is a responsible yes. citizen, even on the roads. Uh, it's it's a good idea. Um, le let's talk about um, how you're going to effect the changeover from the old model license to the new one? Okay. First, um, uh, like we have said, we are still with the East African booklet sort of driving mm -hmm. license. That is one, easy to replicate, and two, it has no record. So for a guy who was involved in an accident where he killed 20 people, there's no way you can be able to know that. So that is the first thing we want to remove, one that cannot be replicated and one that has records. But more importantly also will be the aspect of training because there is no value in getting bad drivers and just giving them a new driving license that will not change much so like i said we have introduced a new curriculum a standardized curriculum because we also had a problem with some of our driving schools mm -hmm. where people go for barely five hours and they become drivers okay can i correct can i correct you lee yes all of our driving schools absolutely you know so they compete on cost who can charge the least and you know churn as many drivers mm -hmm. as possible mm -hmm. and sometimes uh, the, the conditions under which you would get your driving license were less than, you know, fair, to be honest. So I think you want to streamline the whole process so that your first entry on the road is on the right platform. So you have a new curriculum, people are trained properly, and once they are trained, we ensure that they remain with a good behavior on the road. So we want to curb the issue of integrity at the point of entry into your driving or your driving career for that particular matter. And once you've become a driver, your driving license will become now a key thing, just like we have the Credit Reference Bureau. Mm -hmm. And when you want to go and get money from the bank, they'll want to know what sort of a borrower you've been with other banks. So likewise, you would also want to know what sort of a person are you, because even if you're a manager, still your behavior on the road affects how Absolutely. you are and how you deal with other people. So secondly, also is about um, education and awareness. As long as Kenyans believe that they are driving at the right speed because as a policeman, we will never win the war. I think we need to reflect and say, one person killed means children who become orphans, uh, mothers who become uh, widows or widowers for that matter, and people who go may become uh, childless because of your behavior on the mm -hmm. road. Mm -hmm. Look at the money you lose. Look at the country and the money we lose every year until we internalize it at that level or that it can reduce you to become disabled for the rest of your life. On, on that note, on that note, uh, before we end the interview, let's talk about the survivors who yeah, are, yeah. Are, are victims in terms of serious, serious, um, uh, you know, um, uh, impacts. So you talked about the head injuries, uh, back injuries. Many, many people come out with them. We have a lot of paraplegics. Mm -hmm. We have wards filled with people who have serious injuries from road accidents. The question that I'm trying to pose is, what role does NTSB play mm -hmm. in either lobbying or helping to finance mm -hmm. healthcare for people who suffer on our roads? Thank you. As I said, initially, we are a central coordinator for all government efforts, including now Ministry of Health, which we are working very closely with. 
And one of the most important interventions in road safety is to reduce the time between the accident and when the victims get to the hospital. hospital. Mm -hmm. Now that is called the golden hour. If it takes too long, then the chances of survival are low. But more importantly is when you get to the hospital, what kind of facility or services are you able to get? And I must say here that one of our biggest problems is that uh, if you go to an accident scene, is that all manner of activities go on. People are trying to pull through you. One is pulling the leg, the other one is pulling what? And in fact, you have more injuries then than in the actual accident. accident yeah. So we have included in our training for drivers the issue of fasting. How do you respond when you get into a scene of accident? Because most of the people who get there are actually drivers and other road users. So there's that aspect of training to ensure that th no further damage is done to mm -hmm. the injured from that point. And then when they get to the key hospitals, we're also working very closely with the health personnel to ensure that there is proper rehabilitation of those particular uh, injured persons and to ensure that there is as minimal damage uh, and recovery process mm -hmm. is done as soon as possible. I must say also within all our main corridors, we are working to look at all the black spots and hospitals near or around there to ensure that they have the facilities and they have the personnel to be able to ensure that we have quick recovery for all those who are concerned. However, I must say that yes. that's an area that also will require participation from the larger community, and that is now why we want to get to a stage where we can also train the community around those areas, because they're the first responders in, in, in most situations. of these situations. Yes. Lee, thank you so much for joining us. I think you are much more informed about what's actually going on in terms of trying to enhance road safety. You're sending in your views and we're going to share them with Lee and his team, uh, particularly on any hot spots or issues that you think they should be considering. But a lot is happening and we hope that the pattern that has now been established of improvement of road safety Absolutely. on our roads yeah. is going to continue. It's, it's, it's truly a blessing and something we needed to see. Um, we're going to take a look now we go back to net search and um, Lee you'll share your views with us in a moment on this particular issue we're looking of course at what you're focused on uh, on Google search uh, this past week and at number five we have Eid Mubarak. Now Eid Mubarak is the traditional Muslim greeting that's used on the festival of Eid ul Fit. It was marked on Monday last week. The public holiday in Kenya was on Tuesday. Eid means feast and it refers to the occasion. Mubarak means blessed and this expression is used to communicate and share blessings and respect. Uh, moving to number four now and this week at number four we have Ebola. Now, this follows the Ebola outbreak in West Africa. The WHO warns that it is spreading faster than the efforts to control it. Now, the Ebola virus e disease is, is EVD, formerly known as Ebola hemorrhagic fever. It's a severe illness in humans with a fatality rate of 90%. The virus is transmitted to people from wild animals and it spreads in the human population through human to human transmission. It first appeared in 1976 in two simultaneous outbreaks in Sudan and DRC. The latter was in a village situated near the Ebola River. This is where the disease actually takes its name and people have been searching Ebola this past week. We move now to number three and it's TSC, the Teachers Service Commission, again showing up on NetSearch. There are two reasons for it this week. Firstly, pay slips are now online. Teachers can access them. Secondly, there's an ongoing recruitment for new teachers to replace those who have left the service through natural attrition, but also to recruit more teachers who are going to be deployed to northern Kenya. So it's been a busy uh, website this week with lots of searches on Google search. And number two is CASNEP. Again, we've seen this before, net search. Now, this aims to be a world-class professional examinations body. The CPA results are out. That's what's driving this. Stakeholders have been visiting the website for access to the information. Uh, now, for your information, the Certified Public Accountant, CPA in Kenya, is actually the most sought after qualification of all uh, at CASNIP. Um, now we go to number one. And what could it possibly be? Once again, it's football. And I officially declare Kenya a football mad nation. At number one, it is Arsenal versus Benfica in the Emirates Cup 2014. It's clear all things football dominate the attention of this country. Not even the Commonwealth Games, where we did so well, could trump football. Um, so this gives you an, an indication, Lee, before you leave us, yeah. of what Kenyans yeah. are searching. What's so interesting to me is there's no politics in our top ten, for instance, this week. A lot of sports, 
a lot of health information which tells you our population are interested perhaps in different things than the media normally thinks. W what are your thoughts? I would agree that um, it is indeed true that probably what we think is important to Kenyans and what they themselves think is important are two very different things. Maybe the unfortunate part is that the f too much focus on soccer, <laughs> yet the results are not uh, particularly good. Maybe I think today for soccer lovers, maybe not a very good day, but I'm sure we have lessons to learn. But you can see number one search is on soccer. Yeah. But on the same breath, our results again and don't talk good. very do, good. Do you have hope though for Harambe Stars? Do you think they can turn it around? I think we need to learn from models that have worked. I mean, what is it about athletics that makes the whole world talk about us? How come we, are, mm -hmm. we go to certain races and we are number one, two, and three? And uh, yet when it comes to football, we are nowhere, even within the most basic of uh, right. regional races, right. we, we, we have a problem. So I think th 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 we need to go back to the drawing board and probably say that uh, Kenyans uh, value soccer, but the results are not quite um, good. Yet also it's good to ask yourself, how come the few Kenyans who have gone out there and Doing playing so well. internationally are doing so well? And, uh, you know. and with that, we say thank you so much sure. for joining us. We take sure. a break. Think on that one. Stay with Sunday Life.